Um, so Leping will talk about ternary strategy in burn-in degradation investigation of organic solar cells. Uh, so please go ahead. So could everyone see the screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you uh, for the invitation first uh, to present my uh, works during my PhD. So yeah, um, my PhD thesis is mainly talking about the tenor strategy and burning degradation of uh, organic solar cells. Um, so yeah, basically the motivation of my doing research in organic solar cells is um, this really a uh, promising technique that organic solar cell, unlike the silicon solar cell, it can be fabricated by solution process method, which means the low cost, easy fabrication. And this also can be, as a thin film solar cell, can be fabricated uh, in flexible and semi transparent, and uh, which can be applied for many uh, different te technologies such as the BIPV, uh, valve electronic device, and uh, maybe self powered indoor sensor. So that's my motivation. And I think the key. Um, for the this kind of device is firstly the performance and secondly the uh, stability. So uh, my works during the PhD is mainly focused on um, trying to improve the performance of organic solar cell and trying to provide some understanding of how it's degraded and how to suppress uh, the degradation uh, of this kind of device. So. Um, my works mainly focus on these two directions, and I also will combine these two directions together to, de to do a um, combined case study. So, um, first of all, uh, I want to recall some um, background of the organic solar cell. So, basically, organic solar cell is kind of uh, electronic device which consists of the uh, light absorbing organic layers and two uh, carrier transport layer, electron transport and hole transport, and two electrodes. Basically, the light is going to be absorbed by the active layer and can generate uh, electricity uh, in this device. Um, in the organic solar cell, I have to say the key factor to, de to determine the performance is the active layer. So the material you used in this active layer, what kind of organic material, the energy alignment of the active layer uh, in the device and the uh, morphology of these kind of active layer uh, do provide the uh, to provide the uh, to determine the performance of the organic solar cell, which uh, in regards of the power conversion efficiency, which is the efficiency you convert the light into the electricity. And um, in the past five years, so there are thousands thousands of different organic material has been designed especially for the solar cell. Um, and there are do do have some very efficient material can be used, and it's uh, very interesting. So you can fabricate different device selecting different materials um, and in my field uh, what i focus on is we call it ternary strategy so this is kind of a very unique strategy used in organic solar cell usually uh like silicon solar cell the light of the layer contain two material n-type material and p-type material um, they form a pin junction to uh, generate electricity However, in organic solar cell, people find that we can add really a third component into the active layer, into the light of the layer. So this third component can have different uh, effects, such as you can broaden the light absorption profile and you can uh, assist the energy transfer inside the active layer. So it's a really interesting topic, tenor strategy, and uh, I do wrote to review paper. If you guys are interested, you can look for more detail. Um, that's the performance improvement strategy um, and the degradation of organic solar cell. So I have to say that although the uh, performance of organic solar cell has been skyrocketed in the last three years, however, it's not really very stable. So there are many different instability factors that can cause the degradation of the device, such as the continuous light illumination, the uh, heat or the mechanical stress. Uh, but the most interesting point in the degradation is there is a burning degradation behavior uh, in the device, which means if you put your device under its operation at the very initial uh, two to three hours, the device performance can, can drop dramatically. And I think that's the main bottleneck of the uh, organic solar cell before the commercialization. So I do pay my attention to this point and do the investigation here. So about the degradation, there's another review paper I wrote. If, you want. if you're interested, you can have a look. Um, yeah, come to my project. So uh, in the tenor strategy, I first think, for example, using uh, 
a very novel material by adding a novel material into the control device trying to find the efficiency improvement. So uh, as shown the as shown the uh, diagram, firstly I fabricate all the organic salts are really in a in ready structure, consists of the ITO glass as the boiling electrode, the coxar as the electron transport layer, and I use different organic material to consist of the light absorbing layer. I use the body oxide as the whole transport layer and silver as the top electrode. So that's kind of a basic structure of the organic solar cell. You can uh, convert light into the electricity. So my fix is to adding a normal material in this project using a non firm material we call IDFBR. I add this material into the control uh, active layer, which consists of the PDP7 and PC71BM, um, and I optimize the adding ratio. Um, after the optimization, I find that interesting by adding 5% weight ratio of the IDFBR, the power conversion efficiency of the device still can be improved by 14%. And uh, I did a very um, comprehensive investigation of what mechanism behind that. I find that uh, many of the IDFB are showing a um, energy level cascade can form a cascade energy level alignment between the PDP7 and PC70BM, which can assist the uh, charge transfer and uh, the charge separation. So uh, this work has been published on the IEEE Journal of Photovoltaics. So after I find that uh, mechanism, I surprisingly find that the dielectric constant of the active layer can be really slightly tuned by the adding rate by the IDFBR adding. So that's a really interesting topic. So people usually consider the material only have a very constant um, dielectric constant. So so which is which is a which is the same value. However, when you when you add the IDFBR into a blend, blend layer, you do can change the dielectric constant of that layer. So that's the first project. And um, similarly, um, in my second project, I uh, add another non forming material called Y6, which is newly synthesized radio star material into the PDP7TH and ITIC uh, blend layer. A little bit different is that from the absorption point uh, profile point of view, you do can see that the third component Y6 do provide a broader uh, light absorption for your active layer. So this makes sense and this can explain why uh, the JSC, the current generation, has been improved so much. So after optimize the adding ratio of the Y6 from 0% to 100% weight ratio, I do observe that 10% adding ratio is the optimized and the efficiency has been improved 29% when compared to the control device. So uh, a little bit different is that after the um, more detailed investigation in this uh, ternary system, I find that there, there do have a trade-off when you're adding the Y6 into the uh, blend layer. The trade-off is explained by the excise on the dissociation to carry recombination. So, which means when you're adding more S6 into this layer, your exciton dissociation process become better. However, uh, the Y6 can create more charge uh, recombination centers. So, that's kind of trade-off, and we suspect that 10% added ratio of the Y6 do reach the optimized point in this trade-off and do give you the uh, best efficiency. So, that's the um, PDB7TH, Y6, and RTIC ternary uh, normal blend layer. And thirdly, um, in my third project, also a ternary layer. However, uh, before we mainly focus on the uh, non fluorine material, which is more molecular, and in this uh, project, I focus on using a polymer material we called PFFBD42LD as the third component into the uh, active layer. A little bit interesting is that uh, people usually think the third component can have a complementary absorption profile, can help to uh, can help the active layer to get a border light absorption. And that's the main reason of why the uh, current generation has been increased so much. But in this project, I used the polymer PFMBD42D has a very similar absorption profile with the control system. So this doesn't really give you a reasonable explain why the JSC has been increased so much, why the current has been increased so much. And this is the interest point why I'm doing this project. So uh, the same, after optimizing the adding ratio, we do can see the PC uh, have, have a 15.6% improvement. But what is the mechanism behind that? 
So we find the morphology is the key problem. So the PFF bd 42 d as a polymer can effectively tune the morphology of the uh, blend layer of your light absorbing layer. Sorry. And there's still a there do have another trade-off between the energy transfer and exciton separation when you add in the uh, PFF bd 42 d this kind of material. Um, the same 0.1 percent. Uh, 10% ratio, ratio give you the best performance. And I think that ratio helped the blend layer reach the optimized morphology and thus deliver the best device performance. So that's kind of the um, tenor strategy. I use tenor strategy to improve the uh, device performance and, and investigated the mechanism behind that. Uh, it is interesting to find that for different active layer system, for different kind of material, the mechanism is quite different. So uh, I think it's worth to be uh, investigated more by using the updated uh, high efficient organic material. So that's kind of uh, a direction for the future work. And move to the degradation. So as I said, uh, organic soils that do face an instability issue is can be degraded very fast. And uh, first of my thinking is what uh, instability factor can cause the uh, most severe degradation. So uh, in the degradation direction of my research, I investigated different instability factors separately. So in my first project, I, uh, I investigated light and the thermal degradation separately. I did the photo degradation study and thermal degradation study for these two control devices. And definitely the degradation is different. Degradation mechanism is different. And we find that interestingly for the thermal uh, induced degradation device, the degradation do can recover after the initial one hour burning process. But for the photo induced degradation, light induced degradation, this is not recoverable. And um, after the full investigation in this paper, we find that it's too many because the, uh, because the, the morphology uh, changed. So the thermal uh, degradation and the photo degradation can cause the de morphology of your active layer, light of the layer, evolved from two di very different directions. So for the thermal uh, induced morphology change, this can be recovered because after being um, after being after being heating for a few while, so it will form a very unstable uh, phase at the first at the initial stage, and after that, this uh, unstable uh, stage gonna be slightly start to uh, evolve to a stable phase. But for the photo degradation, um, this morphology change is, is unrecoverable. So it's go it's it's endly it's go it's form a very I, I mean unstable morphology at the very initial stage and it can't be recovered after a few times, a few hours of operation. So that's the light and thermal degradation. After that, I also focused on how the uh, L gonna cause degradation in the uh, device. So the L consists of the oxygen and moisture. Uh, definitely, when you put the device under operation in the open air, the oxygen and moisture gonna penetrate into your device. Um, and it's worth to find that the involvement of the L can cause excessive degradation. And this degradation is mainly well cause the degradation in the uh, active layer can cause the energy transfer and exercise on dissociation process uh, become worse. So the, the ability of your device can extract current is become worse. Um, but the main reason is, is that the L, indu the L uh, penetration in the device in the active layer can induce the phase separation in your uh, blend morphology. So which means uh, in the active layer, you blend two materials together. But after the L penetrate into the into the uh, active layer, so you, your two material, the miscibility of two material will change and the phase is going to be separated. I think that's the leading leading cause for why the excess uh, degradation can um, happen when the when the device operating in the air. So for more de detailed uh, study, you can you can refer to this paper which I have published on the energy technology. So that's the L degradation. And after analyzed all the instability uh, factors separately, uh, we def I definitely have to move to uh, 
a case study that combined all instability factors together. So before, when I was mentioned instability factors, degradation mechanism, we find that the morphology do take a very critical role. So the main mechanism behind the degradation is the morphology of the active layer has changed. So your light absorbing or light uh, current extraction of ability has changed. However, when you um, when you put the device under operation, um, that combine all the stability factor, uh, combine the oxygen, water, uh, light, and heating together, your device will actually show a very, have to say, a very different degradation mechanism, and that is very interesting. So after the five hour operation of the device in the open air under 85 degree, under the con continuous light illumination, we find that uh, your PCE have degraded very fast. However, after the AFM and SEM uh, scan, we find that the, the light absorbing layer, the active layer, based on the PM6 and N3, is uh, surprisingly very stable. So the morphology doesn't really change so much. Um, then the interesting question comes. So why, uh, bef before we think the morphology is critical, but why the morphology is related to stable but the device performance degraded so fast. Um, and after uh, detailed uh, analyze, we find that the instability of the interface and the electro in this case take the uh, critical role. So uh, um, the interface between the zinc oxide and the active layer do change a lot. And um, also the electro receiver um, has been degraded so fast during the during this kind of combined uh, test. So this uh, is published uh, on the ACS supply energy, uh, ACS material interface. So for more detailed study, you can have a look. But this do tell you that um, the degradation mechanism really, really, really depends on what system you selected. And when when you combine all the degradation factors together, um, the brain behavior doesn't really uh, have, it's, it's a bo bottleneck for organic cell cells if we want to achieve further uh, commercialization. Um, and in the end, for combined two directions together, I did another case study for the ternary device, high efficiency ternary device um, under the brain degradation. So uh, we do know that the brain degradation is a bottleneck. We do know the ternary strategy can improve the device performance, but how the ternary strategy can have effect uh, when when the device under the brain degradation is an interesting uh, question. And we do, I do did a comparative brain degradation uh, study between the ternary and binary device. So first of all, it's worth to say that the ternary strategy uh, by adding the PCB I mean to the PCB7, COI8, DFIC, the system do can achieve a huge PC improvement. The power conversion efficiency can be improved from around 7% to over 12%. Um, but it's an interesting finding is that uh, the ternary strategy seems to have an effect to can suppress the brain degradation. So look at the uh, power conversion efficiency uh, figure on the left hand side. After five hours uh, brain degradation test, the set uh, is 85 degree one sign illumination and in the open air without encapsulation. So um, the binary device based on the pdf 7 th I a DFRC device degraded very fast, um, and the ternary, ternary device and the uh, corresponding control device degraded a little bit slower. And we find that um, the PDB70 HPC71, this control system, has a very similar uh, degradation behavior uh, when compared to the ternary device. And we, after the uh, detailed investigation, we find that the burning degradation behavior is really depends on the uh, man binary path into the system. So, uh, in this in this in this uh, study, because the because the PC seventy one adding ratio has been has been huge. So the adding ratio is like uh, over fifty percent, um, and that's where of course the whole active layer uh, has been dominated by the PDP seventy H and PC seventy one uh, BM phase. So that's that explain why the uh, ternary, ternary device have a similar behavior 
like the control device PD7, PC7, and BEM. And uh, this also illustrates that uh, by adding the PC71 BM into this binary system, you can give you a better uh, stability. So for more detail, you can refer to this paper. Um, and that's for the case study. Uh, for conclusion, that's all for my uh, PhD thesis for, for some works I did in PhD. So firstly, I developed some noble ternary solar cells uh, that's showing better performance. And I also investigate the mechanism behind that, why this third component can uh, give you a better efficiency. And I find the mechanisms are uh, really different, dif depend on the different system. Uh, secondly, uh, yes, I did the brain degradation process separately compared to analyze the instability factor. Uh, instead, different stability factor do can cause different mechanism. Uh, but when you combine all the instability factors together, the brain degradation mechanism going to be another story. So it doesn't really can um, you, you can't really separate analyze the brain degradation instability factor. You have to uh, evaluate the device. Um, if you want to evaluate the stability, you have to evaluate the device. Combine all the uh, instability factor for the uh, stability test. And yes, thirdly, um, I did a case study for the brain degradation of the high efficiency ternary solar cell. And we found that ternary strategy somehow do, uh, can be considered as a effective way to suppress the uh, performance loss during the brain degradation. And uh, the main binary part in the ternary strategy uh, takes the critical role so in this process. And um, yeah, that's for all for the for all for this work about the time strategy and brain degradation. Um, also, <laughs> sorry sorry about that, but I want to mention about my another project, which is interest project about the semi-transparent solar cells. So as I mentioned, organic solar cells can be fabricated semi-transparent, and still can have many different applications, such as the self-power greenhouse, uh, sunglasses, those kind of stuff, and the Man, diff the, I think the most interesting topic is that uh, there are thousands of organic materials you can select to be used as the light up the layer. And you can effectively be select that um, to, to, to let your uh, light up the layer, let the visible light transmit through, but only absorb the unvisible light region, which means that you can uh, really theoretically fabricate a total transparent solar cell um, that looks like um, the window, but doesn't really, uh, but that can, it doesn't really affect your visual effect, but that can generate electricity. And um, so that's an interesting direction, and I do a lot of review first doing that. Uh, secondly, I do fabricate some semi transparent solar cell by myself. I rationally select the uh, PFI bd 42 d PCBM, the slide absorbing system. I optimize its uh, thickness achieved a power conversion efficiency of 6% with the average visible transmittance around 15%. And the highlight is that the color rendering index I achieved is 90. So the color rendering index means that um, you can, you can the, the property of this device, the color rendering property of, the, of this device, and is if you want to apply the organic solar cell to the window as the, as the building window, I think this property is, is quite critical. Um, also, um, after that work, I also fabricate based on the high efficiency uh, active layer PM6 and the N3 in fabricated semi transparent device, and I optimize the top electrode based on the molar oxide, silver molar oxide, BME structure. So, after, after the optimization, I do fabricate a PCE a, a semi transparent solar cell with the power conversion efficiency around 10%, um, average visible transmittance around 25%, and a very high color rendering index of 97. Um, so, I think, I think this, this, this is a critical step for the, for the organic solar cell to be applied semi transparent, to be applied as the semi transparent solar cell in the BRPV system. And yes, I think that's all. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Uh, another very interesting talk. Um, that's that's a lot of um, papers for your PhD. I mean, very well done. Um, I'll quickly open up uh, if we have questions from the audience. Yes, please. <clears throat> yes, Michael, go ahead. Well, thank you. 
Thanks, Levin, for this really interesting presentation. I actually have just a single question for uh, how to measure the the lifetime of a solar of an organic solar cell. In case of you are encapsulating uh, your device and you are studying the effect of the encapsulate. So okay. should, should, should it be left like uh, for, for long time uh, under the solar simulator or just during the measurement every single day? Um, thank you for the question. So first of all, for all the uh, solar cell I mentioned here for this deputy test is unencapsulated one. And um, this is kind of robust test. It's a kind of, you can consider it as a accelerated um, degradation test. So I just put the cell under the solar simulator um, all day, so the light is continuous uh, so all day. But I do have experience in um, measuring encapsulated device. So when you encapsulate device, first of all, you're using the, um, we, we usually using the copper tape or the silver tape to getting the electrode out to, and after the encapsulation, the device has been fully sealed in the, in the say UV re resin. But the copper, copper tape and the silver tape, you can measure outside. And we also, um, we also have stability test uh, set inside the gold box, which is uh, without, the, without the oxygen. So that's kind of how we measure it. So I mean, for measuring the lifetime of the, of the solar cell itself, should, should I leave it uh, under continuous uh, illumination of the solar simulator? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, do we have any other questions uh, quickly before we go? Uh, if anyone would like to, please just unmute your microphone and jump in. Uh, okay. If if not, then I'm sure everyone would uh, join me in in thanking our speaker again. Uh, very interesting presentations uh, from both of our speakers today. Um, so thanks, everyone. Uh, if you are interested in giving a talk in this format, uh, then you can send an abstract through to me. So my email address is at the bottom of the invite you would have received. Um, if you have a, a student or a postdoc who you think would be good, I'm very happy to, uh, for you to nominate them as well. Um, so please uh, get in touch if you'd like to, um, to give your talk here. Um, otherwise, thank you, everyone. We will be back again next month. Uh, so um, have a good day and I'll see you later.